Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we'll make a vintage eyelet angel ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. I spotted this listing on eBay. It said 12 doll sleeves. And I was intrigued and they looked very promising and Sure enough, when they arrived, I think what they are is um, sleeves from christening gowns, and they're really beautiful. These are a lawn or a batiste, they're very fine. Of course, I intend to make each one of them into an angel. First thing that I wanted to do is examine them, and there are quite a few stains and bits that aren't perfect, but I decided to start with this one and I just turned the sleeve so that the seam was in the back and there's a little bit of discoloration and I might have to soak and wash these but I'm just so anxious to get started. So I'm going to trim this one like this because I need this to be all straight across at the top. This is a 20 millimeter head bead and now the sleeve is about six and a half inches tall. So I'll need a doubled length of tool. This is the six inch tool. I'm gonna to do two of these and then tie them off in the center. with my 16th inch ribbon, nice and tight. Then I'll thread these through the bead, through the head bead, from the bottom to the top. Of course, I, I have a tutorial on how to make the Rick Rack Ruby face. It's not hard, and I use a wood burning tool to create the eyes. I'm pulling these lengths of tool through the bead until the knot just reaches the top of the bead. And then I'm gonna push it back down and I'm going to apply a little bit of glue and then press that on again. I'll tie this off at the top and then I will, I already turned this and pressed it and I arranged it so that the seam would be in the back now I'm going to gather that up. This is a doubled strand of ivory colored quilt thread. And starting in the back where the seam is, I'll secure the thread and then just gather this up about a quarter of an inch from the top edge. Put the dress on the angel and now I'm pulling the gathers tight and then I'll wrap this around her neck and tie it off in the back to secure. I'm a little distracted because I have an extra pair of eyes in the back of the head. Those must not have looked right so I turned the bead around and, um, and I created another face. So don't be distracted by the extra eyes, they'll be covered up. This project doesn't use the sewing machine at all. Since the sleeve is already kind of already made for us and already sewn for us, I don't really have to sew anything. And you can just see how beautiful that's going to be and so vintagey. I pulled out some vintage lace for her collar as well. This one's really distressed. Um, yeah, it's old and it's a little worse for the wear. I'll just cut this in half and tell you how long it is after I cut it. This is a fillet lace. It's about a half an inch wide and about 12 and a half inches long. I'll fold under the end and then gather up the top edge just by sewing a running stitch in and out, in and out. I 
I'll place this gathered lace collar around her neck and secure the ends in the back. This discolored lace is a nice contrast against the white of the sleeve. I'm distributing the fullness of the gathers evenly around the neck. And now I'll stitch back and forth and I'll secure the thread in the back. I'm not worried about how this looks in the back because it'll be covered up by the wings. Let's do the hair. I'm using this fuzzy yarn. It's a cream color, kind of white, more of a white, I'd say. I'm going to do the figure eight technique. One and two and three and four and that might be enough, but let's just go with five just to be sure. And my hair technique is also in the um, Rick Rock Ruby Basics playlist. And so I do a nice, slow, deliberate um, tutorial on how to do this. But I'm going to make two figure eight bundles, one for the front and one for the back. I'll do this, I'll, I'll, I'll be more clear on this one. I'm going to wrap these two fingers, one and two and three and four and five and. And then this end, I'm just gonna make an X. I say make an X. I've taught this so many times. I think this is the part that confuses people the most. And then go all the way around and then pick up the first end and tie it off. I just tie it twice into a square knot, nice and tight, and then trim off those ends, not too short, you don't wanna cut into the knot, but um, then you have a little figure eight, and two figure eights will cover her entire head. So I'll squeeze some hot glue onto the back of her head, and then with one of these bundles, I'm pressing the center of the bundle just behind the hanging loop and the loops of hair, of yarn, I'm pressing into the glue and the back of her head. Then I'll add a little more glue on either side and then I'm gonna press these in a little more. So I added a little bit more glue and now for this section, I'm going to apply glue right here at the top and then press the center of the bundle right into that glue, right in front of the hanging loop. And then I'll apply some glue right along here, on this one side of her head, like this. And then I'm gonna twist this part toward the back and then press it into the glue. And same thing with this side. Squeeze out some glue on the side, twist this bundle toward the back, and press it into the glue. Now for her halo, I've cut about a two inch length of 20 gauge gold wire, just craft wire, and I'm wrapping it around the base of my thimble to give it this nice round shape. It's kind of like a headband and I'll apply a drop of glue to each end of the wire. Then I'll press that into her hair. That looks good. Now I'll give her a little decoration for her neck. I have this vintage trim. I'm not gonna tie a bow, but I'm just gonna do two streamers. And I will fold it in half and apply some glue right there at the fold, and then I'll slide that under her collar, like that. So it's just two streamers. And then I'll tie a little knot in the end of each streamer. That kind of helps to weight down the ends of the streamers. Kind of um, makes them drape a little better, I think. Then I'd like to add a little decoration to her neck and I have a couple of options. These, which are little roses. They're 
Nice. Then I have these, which are teeny tiny little lace circles, which is also nice. Then this, I could cut one of these trims off. This is a little more modern, but it's a nice contrast. So I do kind of like that. And then I have these, which are little white daisies. They're sort of like a scrapbooking embellishment, and some of them are kind of glittery, and then some of them aren't. I like both. I think I'll go with the plain matte ones. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the winner. This is my favorite. I don't think I wanna add the glittery one. I'll just go with the regular paper one. And I'll put that right there. That looks good. It's just the right scale. And then finally, I'll add some wings. And I do have a focus on wings tutorial in the Rick Rack Ruby Basics. So, so since I have so many of the steps already in the Rick Rack Ruby Basics, this went very fast, didn't it? I hope there's enough contrast between the angel and the background here. Can you see that okay? Maybe I'll, sort of, maybe I'll put something under that to, so you can see it better. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.